So why does your car now want to go uphill? Well, to answer that, let's first see how the Unity Wheel Collider works. So I've created a brand new scene, as we can see in here. And in here, we'll create some simple geometry. So let's create a simple terrain, like the one that we have in here. And let's create some hills. Okay, now we got a little hill in here. And now let's try to understand how the Unity Wheel Collider works. To create a car, first you need a empty game object and always remember to replace it to zero. So a requirement for the wheel collider to work, you need a rigid body. So let's add a rigid body and into the rigid body, we're going to give it 1000 kilograms as this mass is representing kilograms. Let's give it a little bit of drag 0.001 and we're going to leave it like that. Another requirement for the Unity Wheel Collider to work is that it needs a collider. So let's create a new 3D object and let's simply add in a cube. So always remember that the cube has to be at zero as well. And now we have a simple cube. And the last requirement to create a car inside of Unity is obviously the wheels. So let's create another empty game object. Make sure it's at zero. And then inside it, let's create four wheels. So to do that, I'm going to create four empty game objects and let's not forget to name them. Okay, this will be the front right wheel. Let's duplicate it for the left wheel and let's duplicate both of these for the rear wheels. Okay, now we have four empty game objects. So having selected all four, let's add a new component and let's search for collider. Now in here, we'll, we're going to see the wheel collider. So if we apply that, we should have these lines in here. And if we get out of that view, we should see four very big wheels. So that's basically the car in Unity. Let's decrease the radius a little bit. Okay, now we have a very, very simple car. So to test that the car will stand on its own four wheels let's drag it somewhere into our scene and let's simply hit play okay it is working and it's sliding a little bit not to worry okay now let's try to build some very simple controls for our small car so let's create a new script i'm gonna call it simple controller and here is our simple script so we're going to delete the start and the update and let's populate this script so obviously we need a reference to all these four wheels. So we're going to create all those four wheels. And to do that, we're going to say public wheel collider. We're going to create a array of wheel colliders and we are simply going to call it wheels. And then we're going to create a fixed update. And inside the fixed update, we're going to create a simple for each. The item will be obviously wheel and the collection will be wheels. Okay, so what do we want to do for all the wheels? Well, we simply want to add some controls to it. So we're going to filter those. So obviously for steering, we can't just steer all four wheels. So we're going to tell it to accelerate only. And to do that, we are going to accept the input. To accept the input, we're going to say wheel dot motor torque is equal to. And now in here, we add in some input. And for the input, we are going to tell it to get it from straight from the keyboard. So we're going to say input dot get axis vertical and obviously we don't want to apply one torque as this gives us only one torque so we want to create another public float and we're going to name it motor power we're going to default it to 100 and we are going to apply motor torque in here so now we have only the torque in our four wheels now let's create another four and this time is going to be a simple for loop that will go into the wheels dot length and in here we are going to ask it if the i is smaller than two and if it is we want to apply steering wheels in the index of i dot steer angle is equal to and in here we want another axis so we're going to copy that in here and paste it and we're going to say in here horizontal and of course we want to vary the input from the horizontal let's create another float and let's call it steer power let's pass the steer power down here as well and now we have a function for applying the motor torque and applying the steering. Let's save the script and let's go back into our scene. Okay, now we have the wheels. Let's define four wheels and let's drag the wheels over here. Okay, now we have a motor power of 100 and a steer power of 100. Let's grab the camera game object and let's drop it inside the car. After you drop it, we're going to reset it to zero and then we're going to move it somewhere above the vehicle, something like this. 
Now let's hit play and let's see what happens. Okay. We can apply some power. We can apply braking as well. And we can apply turning. Okay, so this is the gizmos. And we can see that it applies way too much steering. So let's decrease the steering to maybe like 10. And now we have a little bit less steering. So now we can drive our car as easy as we want. Of course, as long as we don't apply too much power into it. And then it will simply roll off. So how do we prevent it from rolling off? Well, to do that, we need a some kind of a center of gravity somewhere up here. So let's define that. To define that, we are going to need a vector 3. And the best way to do that is by defining a brand new game object. So let's create a public game object and let's call it center of mass. After we define a center of mass, we want to tell the rigid body that we have defined a center of mass. So let's create a start method and into the start method, let's tell the rigid body to do that. And before we do that, we obviously need a reference to this rigid body. So let's do that. Let's create a public rigid body, rigid body. Let's not forget to initialize this rigid body into the start method. So let's say rigid body is equal to get component rigid body. And the reason why we can just say get component or rigid body is because this script is attached to the same game object as this rigid body. So after we get a reference to the rigid body, let's tell the rigid body dot center of mass is equal to center center of mass dot transform dot position. Now we have a center of mass. Let's go back into our scene. Let's create a brand new empty game object. Let's not forget to reset it to zero and let's call it center of mass. And now we get to choose where our center of mass will be. So we want the center of mass to be very low to the ground, like here, for example. After you define your desired position for the center of mass, we want to drag the center of mass and drop it into this slot right here. Okay, now we have a center of mass of our car. Now let's see with the center of mass if the car still rolls over. Let's hit play and let's see what happens. Okay, so if we hit play, we're going to see some weird stuff things as we can see in here the cars just keeps on rolling and rolling and the reason for that is because if we take a look in here we have a center of mass as we defined it earlier we have it positioned where we want it but back into our script we're going to see that it takes in the global position so what we want in here is the local position right here we want the local position to be the center of mass so if we change that to local position we hit save and we go back into our scene we should see some better results so let's see what happens okay now we have a very very stable car we can even see the gizmos it's a very nice and stable car we can drive it it doesn't roll as much we can obviously still roll it okay and the main reason for being able to roll it is because the wheels are way too big and the car is way too small so let's space the wheels a little bit let's make them a little bit more further apart okay that's almost perfect. Okay, now we have our wheels spaced out a little bit more. We have the center of gravity way low down here. And this is how our car looks so far. Now let's get to the point of the video and let's see if the car will go uphill. Okay, now we're close to a, a hill and let's try to climb it. And we can see it does not want to climb. So you might see these weird glitches that happen if you go a little bit quicker and that is because if you select all your wheels and you and you go into your target position if you increase this to a higher value you should see a more stable car so now even if you go a little bit quicker it should be a little bit more stable so why can't you climb the hill whenever you want to it's got plenty of power and it still doesn't work. Well, the appropriate thing to do is to increase this power. So we're going to give it 500 torques, motor torques. And the 500 motor torques is applied into each wheel. So this is not the right power to be applied into, this, to, into each wheel. So now it has way too much power into each wheel. And it obviously will climb any hill you you give it so if you go back into our simple controller that we built the total motor power to be equal to the actual total motor power and the motor power as we know is split into 
each wheel. So the motor power in here should be split into four wheels. If we give the motor power 100 power, we hit play. Now each wheel will have only 25 torques, so it barely moves. Let's give it more power, let's say 500 torques, which should be enough to climb this hill, and it simply does not want to climb it. So if we give the motor power a thousand torques, and if we try to climb this hill, we're going to see that it does not work. So what do we do now? Well, from personal experience, while building my own game, I've found out that the wheel torques that is applied into each wheel is five times less than the wheel that is actually applied. So the appropriate thing to do right now would be to multiply this motor power times five. So we're gonna add in another brackets in here and we're gonna tell the motor power to be five times the initial power. So now if we go back into our scene, we play the game as we built it and we try to go into uphill with only 100 torques. We're going to see that it is going to at least struggle to go. So we're going to give it more power. We're going to give it 400 torques. And now it's already spinning the wheels and we can climb the hill. So that's the basics of wheel colliders. I hope you learn something from it. It's still vibrating for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe probably because it hates me. And that's all I've prepared for this video. So for my personal project, I am using a very, very similar technique that I've been using in the tutorial that I just made. The only pro the only difference in here that is that I'm using a torque curve. So we can vary the torque of each car so it has less power at low revs and high power at high revs i hope you learned something from this tutorial i hope you liked it we can obviously drive on water because who doesn't like driving on water and that's it i'll see you in the next videos